With the third generation Mercedes Sprinter, the Stuttgart brand has thought again about the sort of vehicle a large van should be. It's as practical, well-built and efficient as you could want it to be, but the real change here is class-leading connectivity that can change the way your business fleet could work. In short, it sets a fresh standard. In many ways, the Mercedes Sprinter has come to define the large van sector. Well, with this third generation version, Mercedes also wants to redefine the way that vans can operate. This model is connected and customer orientated in a way that no LCV ever has been before. And on paper at least, it'll be the most sophisticated commercial vehicle we'll ever have tested. The way that things are sold is changing, so the way products should be delivered must change too. And if any van was going to embrace that switch into a new era of commercial operation, it might as well be this one. The Sprinter is, after all, by far the best-selling LCV across Europe, tracing its lineage back to 1995, with a second-generation design appearing in 2006, and this third-generation model being launched in the spring of 2018. With over 3 million sales on the board, Mercedes felt confident to push the boundaries of technology this time around, although you might not think that from a casual glance at the only subtly evolved exterior design. Don't be deceived, the big engineering news this time around lies in the introduction of front-wheel drive variants which join the existing rear-driven and all-wheel driven models. And if your Sprinter powers itself from the front, you'll get a slightly greater payload capacity and the option of a high-tech 9G Tronic 9-speed automatic gearbox. Now that is borrowed from the Mercedes passenger car range, as is the uber-sophisticated MBUX or Mercedes-Benz User Experience Infotainment System, and that claims to set new standards and opens up fresh possibilities when it comes to infotainment in LCVs. Its standard 4G Wi-Fi internet connectivity also powers a sophisticated new Mercedes Pro Connect telematic system, and that could transform the way your business will be able to manage its van operations. And there's much more too. The adoption of electric power steering has enabled Mercedes to build in all its latest camera-driven safety systems and autonomous driving tech into this design. Plus, the cab sets fresh standards for van segment comfort. You can build in just about any luxury feature you can think of, and there's now the widest ever range of possible Sprinter variants to choose from. In short, we're promised a new commercial standard here. Is that what's been delivered? Let's find out. On the move in this Sprinter, we think that two things might initially strike you. The first of these is ride quality, which in our view is class leading, and it's actually better than quite a few family cars we've driven, ironing out all but the worst road surface tarmac tears. It's particularly good over speed humps, which must be the bane of any delivery driver's life. Obviously, as with any large van, things will get a little more unsettled if you happen to be pushing things along without a full load in the back. Uh, if you want to go further, air suspension in the rear is optional. The other thing we think you'll notice is how light the new electrically assisted power steering system feels. It's a speed sensitive setup which is tuned to be finger light at low speed so that parking and manoeuvring is easy. Uh, we do wish it weighted up a bit quicker. It's a bit light going through roundabouts at 20 to 30 miles an hour but once you reach highway speeds there's a solidity to the helm that makes this big van feel pretty stable. Even in high winds where an improved crosswind assist system uh, helps to keep the sprinter from being blown off course. It would be nice to have a bit more steering feedback though. The lack of that makes it a bit of a trick to judge grip levels at speed through tighter turns. And now the rival Volkswagen Crafter can slightly better this Mercedes there, but it can't quite match the composure of a Sprinter, which isn't upset by mid-corner bumps and which gives you the confidence to push this large LCV along, even on tighter secondary roads. As before, there's a range of rear-wheel drive and all-wheel drive variants on offer, and those remain the ones to choose if you're going to be uh, wanting a Sprinter with a high gross vehicle weight or expecting this Mercedes to regularly deal with heavy loads. If that isn't the case, though, then you'll be pointed to one of the front-wheel drive derivatives, which Mercedes is now offering in a bid to widen this model's potential market penetration. 
For this third generation Sprinter, the Stuttgart brand has built in many features from its latest passenger car range, although not rather surprisingly the latest generation OM654 series 2 litre diesel engine. So this LCV perseveres on with the older 2.1 litre four cylinder diesel used in the previous generation model. Mercedes says it's been uprated for this installation and sure enough it does seem notably more refined than before. In fact, uh, this Sprinter is probably now the quietest large LCV in the segment, which makes it an ideal choice for longer trips. At the bottom of the range, the 2.1 litre diesel comes in 114 or 143 HP states of tune. Front driven models get the option of Merck's latest 9G Tronic 9 speed automatic gearbox. If you've decided on a rear driven Sprinter, you'll be offered two further, more powerful engine options. The first is the uprated 163 HP version of the 2.1 litre diesel that we're trying here, and that comes with the option of the company's older 7G Tronic auto box. Uh, we've got that here too. Or you could go for an engine option which remains quite unique in the van segment, an auto-only 3-litre V6 diesel which puts out a potent 190 HP. We should talk a bit about new technology too, uh, the all-electric e-sprinter battery power model that you can ask your dealer about uses the same 84 kilowatt battery pack as is found in the brand's smaller e-veto mid-sized van, but it shares that model's driving range restrictions. Uh, when it's fully loaded, it can only travel about 63 miles between charges. More accessible, you might think, would be the brand's autonomous driving technology, much of it packaged up in an option Mercedes calls Active Distance Assist Distronic. That's a setup that includes a traffic jam assist feature and is able to bring this van to a complete halt uh, in stop-start traffic and then start it off again without any pedal input from the driver. We found that it reacts more slowly than we'd ideally like to sudden changes in traffic speed, braking rather over harshly when it finally does detect traffic ahead. In much the same way, the optional active lane keeping assist system can also be less than subtle about the way it brings a vehicle back into line. So try before you buy is our advice. The Mark III Sprinter has evolved into a much more mature looking large van and it remains as always a classically conservative LCV design. At first glance you might dismiss this as a lightly facelifted version of the second generation model. Certainly there's little to suggest the depth of technology lying beneath this carefully crafted panel work. As usual with a commercial vehicle, the main changes are at the front. Uh, the usual bold grille with its prominent three-pointed star, that's now flanked by more slender restyle headlights that this time around can feature full LED beams and a so-called eagle wing daytime running light design. Uh, there's a more upright windscreen too and some lovely little clever touches. It's now possible, for example, to specify what the brand calls wet wipers, which spurt washer fluid from the blade rather than from jets on the bonnet, and that's in an effort to reduce the amount of time that washing the screen obstructs your view. And from the side, well, it's big, isn't it? These 16-inch wheels, the alloy rims fitted here are optional, look a bit small for the sheer size of this van, and they sit in these blistered wheel arches that are supposed to distinguish this third-generation model. Otherwise, it's very much as you were, with a wide black plastic rubbing strip retained at low level to protect the flanks from dents and scrapes. Uh, you might call this a go-carefully stripe. As before, there are um, a wide range of body style options. In terms of body length, there are short L1 and L2 variants, but many will want the more spacious L3 version that we're trying here. And there's a further super lengthy L4 derivative available if you want that. Uh, plenty of buyers will want to progress from the standard H1 roof height to the H2 option that we've got here. Plus there's a super high H3 roof style too if required. Now at the back, a key design theme carried over from the previous Sprinter model is the half-height prominent placement of the brand badge, although this time around it's been moved down just below this blanked off window panel. Uh, the main defining rear panel crease now flows through this number plate recess, plus there's a slender high set rear stop light and narrow rear tail lights that can feature LED lighting on request. Neat touches include the way that this optional rear view camera here has a self-cleaning function. We are told, though, that the main design changes have taken place in the cab, so let's check those out. And Paul's on the way to approvingly note the low step and the large door opening. 
Inside, it's all very different from the slab-sided dashboard of the previous generation Sprinter, with a sleek, rounded design and higher quality plastics than you'll find in rival models. A lot of the switch kit is borrowed from the Mark's passenger car range, which of course is no bad thing, and fit and finish is rivaled only by the Volkswagen Crafter in this segment. Now, the key improvement here, though, is this uh, MBUX, or Mercedes-Benz User Experience Infotainment System, and that replaces the old optional command setup and it comes as standard either with this 7-inch color monitor or with an optional 10.25-inch screen. Uh, this interface is as cutting-edge as it gets from the brand. In fact, uh, the Sprinter is only the second model from the company to get this, uh, following the fourth-generation A-Class hatch. Now, you don't get the full-width double-screen layout that's on offer there, but the whole setup's still a huge advance on any other infotainment package which is available in the commercial sector. At last, there's a monitor in a Mercedes model that can offer touchscreen and pinch and swipe technology with super quick response times, bright colors and intuitive interaction. It includes all the stuff that you'd think would be there. So uh, a DAB radio, and that's for the first time in a Sprinter, and Bluetooth uh, along with optional navigation. Now the company claims the MBUX setup to be self-learning, able to pick up the driver's routines and to automatically present their favorite features. It can also enable two phones to be Bluetooth paired simultaneously, business and private ones, for example, and it can store multiple user profiles to cater for different fleet drivers. Plus, uh, there's also something you probably wouldn't expect to find a standard 4G Wi-Fi internet connectivity. That drives the Mercedes Connect Pro telematic system that we'll talk about elsewhere in this film, but it also enables the MBUX package to offer a new level of voice control functionality, similar in function to Siri on an iPhone or Google Assistant on an Android handset. All you have to say to start the thing off is, hi Mercedes or hey Mercedes. How can I help and you? And the system will ask that. Uh, you can then tell the virtual assistant what you want or how you're feeling. And in theory, it'll respond accordingly. So if you say, I'm hot, it'll turn down the heating. Uh, if you tell the system, I'm hungry, it'll pull up a list of local restaurants. Ask, do I need an umbrella tomorrow? And it'll give you a weather report. Now, generally, we think this is a great setup, although we would point out that the voice software still needs some work. It doesn't always react to commands that you think would get a response. Um, where are we, for example? and occasionally it trips over itself with certain words. Uh, it doesn't appear to know the difference between new and nude, for example, and that could lead to some potentially interesting consequences. Uh, even less helpfully, the voice control software is rather hypersensitive to the word Mercedes. And if you should have a co-driver and happen to mention the Stuttgart brand's name in casual conversation, then it will annoyingly chime in with, can I help you every time you do? So if you regularly have conversations with your friend Mercedes about her, her favorite band is what Hey Mercedes and how she left her CD in your again? Mercedes, then you'll certainly get the system's attention. Enough on connectivity. Uh, what else do you need to know about this cabin? Uh, well, if you weren't sitting so high and commandingly, you could easily be in a high quality passenger car. There really are some really classy design touches, particularly these stylized air vents with their gloss black finish and this module for the optional uh, tempmatic climate control system. Uh, the driver's seat is very comfortable, even though lumbar support isn't standard, and it's designed to be uh, easy to get in and out of, and that's a very useful feature for multi-drop drivers. It's well worth though upgrading to the optional comfort spec seat that we're trying here. Um, now, as I referenced earlier, virtual instrument binnacle screens haven't quite made it in vans yet, but there's really not much wrong with the clear dialed layout provided here. Now, fancier models uh, separate the main two gauges with a large full color trip computer display, but here we've got the simpler, smaller black and white standard monitor. It still has a great deal of information on it though, including uh, digital speedo, an eco drive readout, and much of the MBUX system's info. You view it all through this handsome three spoke multifunction wheel, which has touch sensitive pads on both horizontal spokes. One is for controlling the MBUX center dash screen, and the other for scrolling through the menus in the instrument cluster. 
Lots of reach and rake adjustment on the steering wheel make it easy to find a comfortable driving position. And as usual, on a large van, a two-person bench is provided alongside the driver's seat. Uh, normally, the centre seat position would be compromised by a protruding gear lever pod, but that's not an issue with this automatic model because Sprinter variants equipped with the 7G or 9G Tronic Auto package get a shifter stalk off the steering wheel here. If you don't mind compromising knee room, you can have a storage area or a a cup holder where the pod would be. Now we've got two double cup holders here uh, within each pair, one holder being smaller than the other so that it can more closely clasp a narrower energy drink can. Uh, this Sprinter is full of thoughtful little touches like that. Uh, with a manual transmission variant, the gear lever pod can be accompanied by a dual cup holder or by a storage hole. Cab stowage solutions seem to have occupied the Sprinter's designers quite a lot. Uh, they've used a modular concept in the design of many of these stowage areas, uh, which means that as an option, you can equip them with lids or extra cup holder mouldings. Uh, plus, space behind the dashboard has been particularly well used, courtesy of this trio of uh, dash top compartments. Now, they're useful, but we found the lids fitted here to be a bit flimsy and occasionally uh, difficult to open. In addition, the bins extend quite a long way back towards the windscreen and that can make it difficult to reach the things inside. Uh, there are single cup holders on either side of the centre box and that has twin USB points inside and further multiple connections for that power sockets can be added as required. What else? Uh, well, you get under seat storage and there's more space to put things overhead, courtesy of these high set shelves just above the sun visors. Uh, there's a useful grab handle in the centre of the cab on the edge of the passenger bench. And there's a couple of coat hooks provided on the bulkhead too. Uh, it's not all great though. For a start, the backrest of the double passenger seat doesn't recline and you can't fold down the centre part of it to create a mobile desk in a way which is possible with many rivals. And as we'll reference elsewhere in this film there's no opening hatch in the bulkhead which would enable long items to be poked through from the cargo area. Annoyingly there's no conventional glove box either there's just that small shelf. Uh, there's only one shelf provided in the doors too some rivals provide two or three. Uh, you do get this small cubby by the door catch though and that would be ideal for coins or you could always put those in one of these small cubbies either side of the MBUX screen below the air vents. It's challenging to try to distill the Sprinter model range into a few words because it is quite simply so vast. Apparently over 1,700 different variants can now potentially be configured, and that's thanks to the addition of front-wheel drive versions to the existing rear-driven and all-wheel driven model lineup. Uh, prices start at around £25,000 XVAT, but with three vehicle lengths, four wheelbases, three roof heights, and a wide selection of body and chassis formats, plus a huge options list, it'd be easy to potentially double that depending on the kind of sprinter your business actually needs. Now, our focus here will be on the panel van body style that most will want, but some buyers might also like to look at the Tura passenger carrying bus body shape or the various chassis cab derivatives. Plus, thanks to the introduction of front wheel drive, there are various tractor head variants too, and that'll make it possible for Mercedes to properly target the camper van conversion market. The Sprinter competes in the large van segment, which currently offers buyers a choice of five other competing designs. Uh, closest in sophistication and technology to what's on offer here is the Volkswagen Crafter, and that's also sold as the MAN TGE. Either way, that's a model no longer related to this one by design, which is why the VW can't quite match the technology that Mercedes is providing here. But it does get a great deal closer to doing that than the other competitors that you'll be offered in the segment, all of which have been around for a long time lot longer. The ubiquitous Ford Transit is probably the best of them, and one of those could potentially save you, well, up to a couple of thousand in terms of upfront list pricing, and could be slightly more economical, but it's from a different generation in terms of interior quality and telematics. And that is certainly the case with the rather crude Iveco Daily, which uh, you'd probably only choose if you particularly needed an extremely high gross vehicle weight. Uh, the Sprinter's max is 5.5 tonnes, but the Daily goes all the way up to 7.2 tonnes. 
Two other aging designs dominate the large van market. The one badged as either a Vauxhall Monvano, a Renault Master, or a Nissan NV400, and the one known as either a Fiat Ducato, a Citroen Relay, or a Peugeot Boxer. Now, all six of these models are honest, hard-working vans, but you'd only really buy one of those over a Sprinter if, as is likely, uh, you were offered an extremely attractive upfront asking price. Even then, though, you're looking at quite a short-term saving because, well, predictably, a Sprinter will be worth much more than its volume rivals when it comes to resale time. If, having considered all those alternatives, you find yourself attracted enough by the quality and technology of this Mercedes and you want to buy one, uh, then you'd probably benefit from some guidance in the options that you'll have in specifying your vehicle. Uh, now, your decision as to whether drive in your Sprinter should be delivered to the front wheels, the rear wheels, or whether you'll need all-wheel drive will affect your choices in terms of transmission and body shape. So, with Pencils and notebooks hopefully at the ready. Uh, let's try to talk you through those options. And let's focus on the front and rear driven panel band variants that most buyers will want. Now, a front-driven Sprinter will be a little cheaper to buy, and in comparison to the rear-driven variant, offers a 50 kilo payload increase, uh, 0.5 cubic meters more load space, and an 80 millimeter lower loading height. These advantages are mainly brought about because of a more compact transmission package. Rear-driven and all-wheel driven models are the ones that you'll need for the uh, more powerful engines and for the higher gross vehicle weight options, and they remain better suited to the heaviest loads as they offer increased traction. Front driven models can be had with a choice of either a six speed manual gearbox or nine G Tronic nine speed automatic transmission and they can be ordered in H1 standard roof height guys with either L1 short or L2 medium body lengths. Uh, rear driven sprinter models meanwhile come with either a six speed manual gearbox or the brand's older seven speed automatic transmission and they give buyers uh, more body shape options. So your starting point with a rear driven sprinter van is the H1 L2 standard roof height medium body length package but if that isn't large enough for you uh, then there are also L3 long and L4 extra long body lengths which both incorporate the H2 high roof body shape. Now we've got an L3 H2 rear driven model here. An even loftier H3 super high roof is available on request. The transmission choices and body shapes available to customers who want the all-wheel driven models are very much the same as those available to folk wanting rear wheel drive. Got all that? Good. Now, choose carefully and you'll not be short of space for the seriously bulky cargoes that this vehicle can swallow. That's anything between 7.8 cubic metres and 17 cubic metres, depending on variant. Now, as usual with large vans, a key consideration is gross vehicle weight. Uh, in this case, there are four options, three, three and a half, four or five tonnes. The three tonne models, which are only available with front wheel drive, are badged with the number starting two, so 211 CDI and 214 CDI, depending on choice of engine. Uh, the 3.5 tonne models uh, have the same structure, but they have badge work starting three, and that's what we've got here. Uh, the four tonners start four, and the five tonners, which are only available with rear wheel drive, start five. Uh, at least that's not too complicated to grasp. Uh, as you probably know, the legal gross vehicle weight limit for a regular car driving license is 3.5 tonnes. Now, if you're wondering about the second and third figures in the model designation, well, they refer to the engine that you've chosen. And that will almost certainly be a version of the 2.1 litre four-cylinder diesel unit that Mercedes has refined and carried over from the previous generation model. Uh, the 211, 311 and 411 CDR models use the base 114 HP power plant, but most Sprinter customers are likely to opt for the gutsier mid-range 143 HP version of that engine used in the 214, 314 and 414 CDR. CDI variants. If you've decided on a rear-driven Sprinter, you'll be offered two further, more powerful engine options. The first is an uprated 163 HP version of that 2.1 litre diesel. That's badge 316 CDI as here, or 416 or 516 CDI. Beyond that, Mercedes is continuing to offer an engine option which is quite unique in the van segment, a 3 litre V6 diesel putting out a potent 190 HP. That's badged as either 319, 419 or 519 CDI. We also ought to give a mention to the all-electric eSprinter battery power model that you can ask your dealer about. That uses the same 84 kilowatt battery pack as is found in the brand's smaller Evito mid-sized van, and that's available with a single payload capacity option of 1,250 kilos. 
Ah, uh, yes. Now, payload capacity. Uh, we should talk about your options there if, as is obviously most likely, you choose a sprinter with conventional diesel power. Uh, now, we mentioned earlier the 50 kilo payload advantage that the front-driven sprinters enjoy over their rear-driven counterparts. But, as we've also said, uh, you'll need to balance that against the gross vehicle weight that you'll need. Now, in this regard, uh, most people will want to avoid the two designated three-ton variants. Uh, they're only really intended for light city deliveries and and in panel van form, they have restricted payloads which range between 804 and 887 kilos. The three designated 3.5 tonne variants will almost certainly suit you better. They have payloads mainly ranging uh, between uh, 1,014 and 1,387 kilos. For the four designated 4 tonne versions, the payload mainly varies between 1,678 and 1,962 kilos. And for the five designated 5 tonne versions, the payload can vary between 2,306 and and 3,000 kilos. If you've gone through the specking process, uh, you've looked at your company requirements and you've crunched the numbers, uh, then by this point, you should have a pretty good idea of the kind of sprinter that your business needs. And you'll also be at the point where you're ready to decide on the particular items of equipment that you'll want with your chosen version of this Mercedes. So uh, let's start this part of the process by listing what comes as standard. And let's share the headline news that all variants come with the MBUX or Mercedes-Benz U user experience infotainment system, and that's accessed through a 7-inch touchscreen. It incorporates a DAB radio that's available for the first time in a Sprinter, uh, plus Bluetooth, real-time traffic information, and a so-called real speech voice control system, which allows you to ask questions of the MBUX package. It's a bit like Siri on an iPhone or a Google Assistant on an Android phone. MBUX also includes a communications module incorporating a mobile 4G Wi-Fi hotspot and that makes possible the infrastructure that's necessary to run the thing that might really sell you this Sprinter, its standard Mercedes Connect Pro telematic system. Now this is an app-based setup which enables company operators to remotely keep track of their vans and to be directly linked to them at all times. Uh, there are no fewer than 18 elements which make up the Connect Pro package and they're all controllable via your phone or PC. Now, to give you just a few examples, uh, the vehicle supervision segment tells you everything about the van itself, uh, so fuel levels, tyre pressures, uh, whether doors are locked and so on. Vehicle operations tracks the van in real time and can notify you if it leaves a set geographical area. Uh, the vehicle management tool will allow you to organise deliveries and collections remotely by sending messages through to the vehicle. Uh, maintenance management, well, this remotely deals with mechanical servicing issues and a digital drive driver's log makes it easy for the driver to track working journeys uh, with business, commute and private settings. In private mode, all of the tracking systems are disabled. Enough with connectivity. What about more conventional standard Sprinter equipment features? Well, they include cruise control, uh, auto headlamps, a multifunction steering wheel and heat insulated windscreen glass. Uh, practical stuff includes a left hand sliding side door, uh, a wood floor in the cargo area, an alarm immobiliser and a spare wheel. On to options. Now there are over 600 extra cost features available on this third generation Sprinter, but we'll try to pick out some of the key ones for you here. Uh, now we mentioned automatic transmission earlier, the 9G Tronic gearbox on the front driven models and the 7G Tronic system on the rear driven and the all wheel driven variants. Uh, either way, you're looking at just under £1,500 more for that. Uh, most buyers are going to want to pay extra for air conditioning and for navigation too. Now here we've been trying the Tempmatic climate control system system and the latest Mercedes sat-nav setup which is much better than the old Garmin source package. Uh, it'd be tempting to take up the option the brand offers too of uprating the screen size of the MBUX infotainment system to 10.25 inches plus you can build in an upgraded uh, Mercedes audio system if you want to. Full LED high-performance headlights are optional, and if you specify those, uh, you get the chance to add in partial LED illumination for the tail lamps too. High beam assist uh, can dip your headlights for you at night, and you can have front fog lamps with a cornering function. Uh, now, we also like the optional wet wiper system, which spurts washer fluid from the blade rather than from jets on the bonnet in an effort to reduce the amount of time that washing that screen obstructs your view. And you can add hinged lids to some of the interior stowage components 
departments. Uh, that's in an effort to keep valuables out of the sight of prying eyes. A wireless charging mat, a smartphone cradle and a 12 volt socket in the cargo area are all optional, as are seat back stowage nets. Uh, as for cargo practicalities, you might want to consider the rear doorstep that we have here. Uh, there are fixed or sprung options, an LED light strip in the low compartment and half or full height ply lining sidewall panelling would be helpful too. Uh, plus the optional load securing rail system would help to keep your delivery items in place. Uh, right hand side sliding door might also be useful and do bear in mind that the side doors on both sides can be specified in power closing form if required. Uh, windows can be added into the bulk head, the rear doors, the sliding side doors or even in the rear of the roof for the few operators who might want that. Um, heated and power adjustable mirrors cost extra as does keyless entry and of course you can add front and rear mud flaps. As for driving stuff, well, various air suspension packages are on offer. Uh, all season tyres are available and you can have rain sensing wipers. If your sprinter will be operating regularly over rough roads, then you might want to look at the raised body package or the reinforced shock absorber option. Uh, you can, of course, add a tachograph, a speed limiter and tow bar and trailer couplings. And you can have a reversing camera with or without a special parking package. And that comes as standard if you go for the optional 360 degree camera system. Uh, in addition, you can add an electronic handbrake if you want to, along with heat insulating glass and a heated windscreen. Strangely, the Mercedes Eco engine start stop system is also optional. If you're interested in aesthetics, as owner drivers will be, uh, you'll want to know that there are various optional metallic paint colours and it's possible to pay extra to get the uh, bumpers, uh, the radiator grille frame and various detachable body parts painted in body colour. A chrome plated radiator grille is optional too and you can have 16 or 17 inch alloy wheels or the usual steel wheels with an arctic white finish. For the inside you could add luxury interior panelling, orange seat belts and a leather covering for the steering wheel the gear stick. We'd want the more supportive comfort driver's seat that we've been trying here. Uh, you can add one in for the front seat passenger too and you can pay extra for lumbar support and add in armrests. Mercedes also offers even better suspension versions of both front seats that really do soak up the bumps. Uh, both front seats can be power adjusted and heated too and if you really want a touch of luxury they can be trimmed in Artico black man-made leather. Finally, let's take a look at safety provision. Now, the major change here lies with the addition of autonomous braking. Mercedes calls its package Active Brake Assist. It's one of those setups that scans the road ahead as you drive looking for potential accident hazards. If one's detected, then you'll be warned. Uh, if you don't respond, or perhaps you aren't able to, then the brakes will automatically be applied to decrease the severity of any resulting accident. Uh, this third generation Sprinter model also includes standard attention assist, which constantly monitors your driving reactions for drowsiness and which will, if necessary, prompt you to stop for a restorative coffee. Uh, also standard is crosswind assist. Now that automatically compensates for side winds that might throw this Mercedes off course. Should you still manage to have an accident, then the Sprinter's MBUX infotainment system incorporates the feature which will automatically alert the emergency services with your exact GPS location should the airbags go off. As for more conventional safety stuff, well, of course, there's ESP stability control with ASR, acceleration skid control on all models, plus ABS with brake assist and electronic brake force distribution to maximise its effectiveness. Uh, there's a bulb failure indicator and a useful feature, too, that flashes the rear lights to warn following motorists in emergency stops. Hill start assist stops you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions. Uh, if you tick the box for a factory-fitted trailer coupling, uh, clever TSA, trailer stabilisation, system is also included. Panel van variants like this one get only a driver's bag in the standard tally but you can of course add a passenger bag from the options list and thorax, pelvis and side airbags for both front seat passengers plus window airbags for both driver and co-driver. If you want to go further, then there are various camera-driven options which are borrowed from the Mercedes passenger car range. Uh, blind spot assist will warn you if you're just about to pull out when there's a vehicle in your blind spot. Uh, active lane keeping assist will keep you in the centre of your lane uh, when you're on the highway. And it'll apply subtle steering correction should you start deviating towards the lane separating lines. Uh, traffic sign assist pictures road signs as you pass them and then displays them on the dash. And drive-away assist helps you to avoid low 
low-speed scrapes by warning you if you're manoeuvring towards a stationary object and in that instance automatically limits your speed to two miles an hour. Autonomous driving also makes a first appearance on this Sprint Models tech spec, although you'll have to pay quite a lot extra for the optional Active Distance Assist to Distronic package to get that. Um, it uses a radar to automatically keep you a set distance behind the vehicle in front at highway speeds, and it includes a Traffic Jam Assist feature, which is able to bring the van to a complete halt in stop-start traffic, and then start it off again without any input from the driver. This third generation Sprinter might have class leading connectivity, but that won't matter much if it can't be as spacious and practical as operators will need it to be. So let's check that out using this typical L3 H2 rear wheel drive panel van as an example of the kind of thing you might get. Now the twin rear doors can be swung out in the usual way to 90 degrees, onwards to 180 or even 270 degrees if necessary. Front driven models allow an 80mm lower loading sill height, Mercedes quotes 566mm for that. If you need a higher set rear driven variant like this one, this optional rear step will be particularly useful as a good halfway point to rest heavy loads before hauling them up into the cargo area. Now the width of this rear aperture is 1555mm, so even pretty bulky stuff should go in. Uh, ultimate loading capacity does of course uh, depend on your choice between the four body lengths. The shortest L1 one variant features a load space length of 2,607 mils. The L2 version boosts that to 3,272 millimeters, and this L3 derivative gives you 4,307 mils. That's enough to take four standard Euro pallets. With the longest L4 model, it's 4,707 millimeters. The load compartment width is 1,787 millimeters. If it's ultimate cargo capacity you want though, you'll need somewhere to park either the H2 high roof variant or even conceivably the SuperPi H3 roof model. As previously mentioned, uh, it's the H2 variant that we have here and that sees the standard H1 body shapes roof height increased from 2,365 mils to 2,620 millimeters. With the H3 body shape, the roof height would rise to 2,831 mils. As you expect, this means that seriously tall cargo can fit inside. In the case of the H3, there's up to 2,243 millimetres of low compartment height. As you expect, these height and roofs make a big difference to cargo capacity. They boost the load bay volume up from the short length standard roof L1 H1 model 7.8 cubic metres to a truly cavernous 17 cubic metres if you were going to go for the very biggest L4 H3 Sprinter version. Uh, whatever your choice of variant, near vertical interior walls and levelled off wheel arches which are of load bearing strength mean that you can make the most of the space on offer. You'll want to know about your gross vehicle weight options across the Sprinter range. So things kick off with the two series models. They're only available with front wheel drive and they have a gross vehicle weight of three tons, but you'd probably be better off with a 3.5 ton three series model like this one. Uh, for businesses where we're shifting seriously solid loads, the four ton model designations start four and the five tonners, which are only available with rear wheel drive, start with a numeral badge of five. Now, we mentioned earlier the 50 kilo payload advantage that front driven sprinters enjoy over their rear driven counterparts but as we've also said you have to balance that against the level of gross vehicle weight that you'll need. In this regard uh, most will want to avoid the two designated three ton variants uh, because they're really only intended for light city deliveries and in panel van form they have restricted payloads which range between 804 and 887 kilos. The three designated 3.5 ton variants will almost certainly suit you better uh, they have payloads mainly varying between uh, 1,014 and 1,387 kilos. For the four designated four-ton versions, uh, the payload mainly varies between 1,678 and 1,962 kilos. And for the five designated five-ton versions, uh, the payload can vary between 2,306 and 3,000 kilos. The all-electric eSprinter battery-powered model that you can ask your dealer about has a single payload capacity option of 1,250 kilos. 
So let's say you've crunched the payload and capacity stats and chosen the right size and weight of your sprinter for your company's needs. The next issue relates to just how practical this Mercedes is likely to be in day-to-day -day use. Well, once everything's in, uh, you'll be pleased to find that there are grab handles provided inside each of the two rear doors, four interior lights for nighttime work, and in this L3 length model at least, no fewer than 12 tie-down points in the floor to secure potentially wayward loads. Uh, should you forget to use those and everything slides forward, then you'll be very glad of this standard full height bulkhead. As usual, it's a false economy not to pay extra for the kind of ply lining protection for cargo area sidewalls we've got here. If you don't, these will quickly become covered with scratches and dents. Uh, this wood floor comes as standard. As usual, uh, a sliding passenger side side door is standard with a second driver's side sliding door on the options list. In both cases, the width aperture of the door in question, 1260 mils, is big enough for pallets to be loaded in from the side, as you'd hope it would be in a van this big. And uh, Mercedes has thoughtfully fitted another useful grab handle here. Uh, what you don't get in this Mercedes, though, is the option of any kind of bulkhead load-through hatch, so longer items like pipes can be pushed through into the cab. And that's the sort of thing that's been offered for some time in a rival Ford Transit. To be fair, this Sprinter's closest rival, uh, the Volkswagen Crafter, doesn't offer that feature either. But for us, it's still a significant omission, and it's one that the Stuttgart brand needs to quickly correct. Keeping costs down will be a major priority for potential owners. People who will like the clever Assist Plus service computer, which is standard on all sprinters, and is able to detect when a garage visit is required, and taking into account the vehicle's actual usage. A service part of the instrument binnacle display screen has an Assist Plus readout, and in addition, it will update you on the amount of AdBlue diesel fuel additive you have left, and tell you about coolant and engine oil levels. Uh, front wheel drive sprinters require servicing every 20. 4,000 miles or two years, whichever is sooner. Uh, they'll also probably get through front tyres a bit quicker. Uh, rear wheel drive sprinters can go up to 37,000 miles between services and some operators will be able to extend these intervals by up to 6,000 miles or more with careful use. Now, Mercedes-Benz servicing isn't particularly cheap, and the same goes for parts, but the company does offer a line of reconditioned parts at lower prices, and for this model, uh, they've tried to make it easier to replace individual components rather than entire assemblies. Uh, customers are also offered an excellent emergency breakdown assistance package, and that's called Mobilo Van. Now, this will be free for up to 30 years, provided you continue to get your Sprinter serviced at an official Mercedes center. Now, that will save you the cost of getting extended breakdown cover, which might compensate for paying a little more for the service itself. Elsewhere in this film, we've talked about the standard Mercedes Connect Pro telematic system, and one of its packages is maintenance management. Now, this can advise you of upcoming service and maintenance issues well ahead of time, allowing you to get the work done when it's least inconvenient, minimising downtime and improving operating efficiency. A three-year unlimited mileage warranty is standard, as is a 12-year anti-perforation bodywork warranty. Residual values are predictably class-leading, and they account for the way that some some industry experts we've spoken to calculate that after three years and or 90,000 miles, your total costs for sprinter motoring will be likely to be about £1,500 less than would be the case for an equivalent Ford Transit. And that even takes into account this Mercedes high asking price. But what about fuel and CO2 emissions? Well, Mercedes' decision not to launch this third-generation Sprinter with uh, its latest two-litre four-cylinder diesel unit, but continue on with the revised version of the previous 2.1-litre engine, means that class-leading figures in this regard are out of the question. Still, that older power plant is still quite efficient, and it offers legendary reliability, underlined by over six million miles of testing. Here's an engine that's been developed to run for a minimum of 220,000 miles.
Now, the exact fuel and CO2 figures you'll get will, of course, vary dependent on gross vehicle weight, body shape, drive format, transmission and wheel size, with the front-driven models usually being slightly cleaner and more frugal than the rear-driven variants. In most cases, the combined fuel consumption figure will be somewhere between 35 and 40 miles per gallon, and the CO2 reading will be somewhere between 200 and 216 grams per kilometre. Now, to be specific, the 316 CDI rear-wheel drive auto variant we're trying today manages 36.2 MP on the combined cycle and 203 grams per kilometre. You can monitor your success with regards to frugality via a vehicle info section of the MBUX infotainment screen and that can graphically display your fuel consumption over three preset periods, seven and a half minutes, 30 or 90 minutes. Uh, there's also a display on the instrument binnacle screen that grades the frugality of your driving. Disappointingly, though, Mercedes makes you pay extra for the Eco Engine Start-Stop system that cuts the engine when it's not needed at the lights or in urban traffic, and that significantly improves those figures. It's also worth knowing that the 71-litre fuel tank you get in rear-driven and all-wheel-driven models is reduced slightly to 65 litres for the front-driven variants. Uh, the ultimate solution for reducing day-to-day -day running costs with this van, though, is to go for the all-electric, battery-powered e-sprinter model that you can ask your dealer about. Now, unfortunately, this derivative won't yet make sense for the majority of Sprinter users. It uses the same scalable 84 kilowatt battery pack as is found in the brand's smaller e-Vito mid-sized van, and when it's fully charged, it has a 93-mile maximum driving range under ideal conditions. Now, that reduces to 62 miles when heavy loads or poor weather put but more demand on the electric drive system. This Sprinter has made it its business to set new standards over the years. It was the first large van to adopt stability control, the Euro 6 emission standard and autonomous braking to pick just three innovations that have earned it over 80 awards since this model's original introduction back in 1995. Arguably, though, this third-generation design pushes the boundaries of technology much further than any of its predecessors and, crucially, much further than any competitor. Its onboard communications module makes possible a whole new era of improved connectivity between drivers and fleet managers. Uh, going forward as a company operator, you'll know exactly how each of the sprinters in your fleet are being driven and where each one is. Uh, you'll be able to send messages direct into the infotainment system of each van, organizing or reorganizing deliveries or dealing remotely with maintenance issues. You'll know how much fuel each van has and even if the windows have been left open. And if it's ever stolen, you'll always know exactly where it is. No competitor can offer all that. Predictably, of course, most of those rivals are cheaper and some of them also feature more versatile cab design. Uh, there really ought to be the option here of pushing lengthier items uh, from the cargo area through into the cab. Uh, Mercedes' decision to carry forward an only slightly updated version of the previous generation model's engine range means that some competitors can offer slightly lower fuel and CO2 figures too. Uh, the Sprinter, though, is there or thereabouts in all these areas, ticking the important boxes with a kind of thoroughness that you'd expect from a van bearing the famous three-pointed star. It offers the classiest interior, the most sophisticated infotainment provision, the smoothest automatic transmission, and the widest range of available variants. Premium pricing is compensated for by premium residual values, and if funds permit, you can make a Sprinter feel more luxurious than any other LCV on the market. All of which means that whatever your business happens to need, this could be your right-hand van. Some things just don't change.